Hi there guys and welcome back to the shop. Today we get to finally put some of the things that we've made to use. There's a reason that these videos are in this order and we're going to test a neon sign transformer. This is a really important thing to be able to do because they fail frequently. They're kind of delicate and oh, we need to be able to cover some of the oddities specific to neon sign transformers. Now, different transformers, like if you have something like this, this is a potential transformer. This is not a neon sign transformer. So the testing procedure would be a little different. If you have something like this, different transformers operate differently. And especially when you get into non-current limited things, most transformers aren't gonna be current limited which is why we're starting with neon sign transformers, because they are, which makes them inherently safer and just worlds better for the beginner. If you're, if you're just starting out, don't mess with mods. They're not current limited, they're wicked dangerous, and they're a pain in the butt because the voltage is way lower. Microwave oven transformers only put out two or 4,000 volts. It's a complete pain in the butt to be able to get a spark gap to work at such low voltages because the spark won't jump very far. So we're gonna begin in testing our NST with hooking up our power in the way that we've discussed previously. We'll just take off our terminals here. And you're gonna have hot, neutral, and ground on most NSTs they're not even gonna be labeled. The only way you can tell um, them apart is that you've got the insulator for your, your primary. On some NSTs, modern ones, um, Allenson does this. They'll actually label, you'll see a L and an N on your primary coil terminals. The N means neutral, that's your white wire. And the L means black line, it's your black wire. But as a rule, especially with the older NSTs that you wanna be playing with, because you do not want a shiny new NST. We'll talk about that in the next episode. Um, they're usually not labeled. It doesn't really matter until we get into phasing. So we've connected our neutral, our line hot, and our ground. And now we're ready to power this up. Before we do that though, we're going to connect also on our ground, our nifty hot stick that we made. Probably should have put that on before I tighten the wire down. And this is one of the advantages of ring terminals. If you were doing this with like just a bent bit of wire on the end, it takes way more time. It's more of a pain in the butt. This is, this is much easier. All right, so by this point, you should have your wires look like this. This is your neutral, your white wire, your hot, your black wire, and these go off to your power feed. This is your green wire, and it, it goes off to your power cord. This is your ground. So this is establishing our mains ground from your house, from wherever you have this plugged in. This extra wire down here, also connected, just stacked right on top with the nut tightened down on both, is your, your uh, hot stick, your test stick. So you should have four wires connected to your neon sign transformer at this point, and that's it. You shouldn't have anything connected to the high side. So now we're gonna cover something really important. This is called the pocket rule. If you have a cord connected, you can see this isn't plugged in anything. If you have a cord connected to your neon sign transformer, and you're gonna be working on stuff, you're gonna be touching things that are sometimes dangerous, whenever this isn't on, and whenever your hands are anywhere near it, this cord goes in your pocket. That's an important habit to get into. Just, you're gonna, you're gonna spend a lot of time with the cord in your pocket. Um, for a lot of stuff, you're gonna spend time with your hand in a pocket. Because if you touch, if you touch this, it's going to hurt. It's gonna hurt unimaginably bad. And it can kill you, even if you just touch it with one hand, because the 60 milliamps of current in there is way above what you need in order to screw up your heart and kill you. But you're much less likely to instantly die if you only touch it with one hand and the electricity goes here, down, 
than you are if you touch it with two hands and immediately put it right across to your heart. Okay, so for safety, for a lot of stuff, you're gonna have either a hand in your pocket or a cord in your pocket or whatever. So there's, it's, it's not an intuitive habit, but it's one you need to get into. And you're on your own here. I'm not standing next to you. So you need to really drill this because it, it, it's a very big deal, even though it doesn't seem like it right off the hop. So with that, we've got our grounded test lead here. We're gonna set that right on top. Now we're gonna take our cord we're gonna put this hand in our pocket and we're gonna keep an eye on that while we plug this in. Okay, I'm actually gonna have to take my hand out of my pocket because I'm plugging this into an extension cord and I need two hands for that. So I'm gonna stand well away because there's about to be 12,000 volts of stuff happening here. So this, you don't know what's gonna happen, especially if it's a brand new NST. This might start smoking, it might start spits and sparking, parts can pop off. In fact, I strongly recommend, whenever possible, get a good pair of safety glasses. Don't get the garbage safety glasses. It costs like a buck and a half. You find them at the checkout at your local big, but those are terrible. Um, I'll actually put a link in the description to the best safety glasses I've ever had. And they're not stupid expensive. You can spend way more money on safety glasses. These absolutely reasonably priced. They're metal frames. They're adjustable. They're, they're heavy duty. These are these are what the hardcore aircraft mechanic cool dudes wear. And I know because a friend of mine that hooked me up with these is an aircraft mechanic and I love them. I absolutely love them. So I'll give you a link to that so that you can have safety glasses that don't suck because if you have a good pair and they're comfortable, you'll wear them more often. And that's what I need you to do. So we're going to take a step back. We're keeping an eye on everything. If anything's going to happen, it's probably going to happen at one of the ends or it's going to happen out the top. So we're going to take a step back and plug this in, and now our system's hot, okay? This is exactly what you want. It's, it's weird because like you just, there's 12,000 volts happening here. It doesn't make a sound. It probably makes a little hum, and I just can't hear it over the robot and the server fan and all that jazz. But aside from a tiny little hum, this shouldn't make any noise at all. If it's making like a lot, like if it's making a static sound or a crackly sound or anything like that, immediately unplug it. It's probably about to start emitting magic smoke. So we have a hot system. We're gonna put one hand in our pocket and with the other hand, we're gonna grab the lead. Now the cool thing about the way we wired this up because this is connected to ground, you can touch that on the end and it's totally safe. This won't hurt you. This is, this is grounded. And that's the point. Some people, I've seen people test these by hooking this up to the hot side and touching the, that's dumb as hell, don't do that. This should be grounded all the time. Now, since we know we have a 12,000 volt transformer, this is where we get to talk about how they wired these up kind of weird. This is a center tapped transformer. So what you actually have is two smaller transformers. You don't have one 12,000 volt transformer you have two 6,000 volt transformers. So since we're grounded here, if we have 12,000 volts out here or 6,000 volts out on this end where we're supposed to, we should be able to draw an arc. Now, I'm not just gonna touch that right on there. I'm gonna bring it in slow. And we can see that'll jump right about a quarter inch. Okay. I know, that's how we know we have 6,000 volts off this end, and that's working great. So here's a neat thing about voltage and amperage. Think of electricity like water in a pipe. Volts is the pressure. Amperage is how big around your pipe is. So the volts determines how far that'll jump across that gap, okay? And at 6,000 volts, we can get give or take a quarter inch. Now, that distance will change with temperature, air pressure, humidity, all kinds of stuff will affect it. But in this room, at standard temperature and pressure, it's about quarter inch today. Now, the current determines how far I can pull that arc out. as I draw it out. So if that had really no current behind it, I'd just get little snaps like static like that. If that had a lot of current behind it, 
I could pull, even though it's only 6,000 volts, I'd be able to pull that out like a foot or more. And we'll get to do that in the future. But right here, right now, you can get about an inch, inch and a quarter maybe. Now here's an interesting thing. If you look at that arc really close, you can see that when I draw the arc out, it doesn't go in a straight line. It actually kind of arcs and bends and moves. And it doesn't just arc like an electrical arc, it arcs like it moves in a curve. Why does it do that? What could be affecting that arc to make it want to not move in a straight line? It actually looks, when you stretch it out, it looks kind of like a bell curve. Why is that? So we know that this side of the transformer is working good. Let's go take a look at this side. And I've got a nice, perfect arc that exactly matches this one. So I have 6,000 volts from this end to ground, and I have 6,000 volts from this end to ground. Now here's an important thing. Don't touch this anywhere else. If you touch this grounded electrode to the hot electrode in the middle, you're gonna get a really big flash, a loud bang, trip the breaker, and you might, you might do some damage somewhere, especially if your house doesn't have pristine, perfect, brand new, super safe, ultra awesome wiring in it. And it probably doesn't. So do not touch this on any of the line side electrodes because the, the voltage is trivial. It won't jump out. Electricity will not jump below 300 volts. That's the dielectric strength of air is about 300 volts. So anything below 300 volts, you have to physically touch it to make it to make any kind of a spark. That's only 120 volts in America, but there's a lot more current behind it. Probably 15 or here in my shop, 20 amps. It's gonna blow the tip off your wire. It's gonna shoot, it's, it's gonna shoot molten metal. It's gonna be bad. Don't do that. So we've done our test and we know our transformer works good. And now we can turn it off. So plug in pocket. So what's cool to learn about this here is we've delved into a little bit of how neon sign transformers are made. Everything's made to a price point. Everything's made, you know, it's, it's, it's capitalism. It's how it works. They want to be able to sell you a transformer cheaper than the other guys so that you buy their transformer. So it's a lot cheaper to make a transformer that's insulated only to 6,000 volts than it is for one that has to be insulated to 12,000 volts. So overwhelmingly, there are exceptions, but they're rare. Overwhelmingly, neon sign transformers are center tapped. So where a regular transformer would have a, a coil and or two coils and one core, this has three coils on one core. You have a secondary coil here that's giving 6,000 volts from chassis ground to that terminal. You have a central coil, that's your primary coil at 120 volts. And then on this side, you've got another secondary coil that's giving 6,000 volts relative to chassis ground. But what makes it cool is because you paid for a 12,000 volt box, you want a 12,000 volt box. Well, you're gonna get a 12,000 volt box. You just need to change your point of reference because when you measure voltage, it's always a difference between two points. Usually when you think about something at like 120 volts, okay? Well, that's 120 volts relative to something else. Neither of these are at 12,000 volts relative to case ground, but relative to each other, they are. And the reason is because it's AC. So when this one goes up by 6,000 volts above zero, at that exact same instant, this one goes down negative 6,000 volts relative to zero. So when this is 6,000 plus, this is 6,000 minus. And if you think of it like a number line, 
Okay, if we've got zero here and we go 6,000 this way, well, we've got 6,000 volts. But if we got zero here and we go 6,000 this way, well, now from here to here, we have 12,000 volts. And since these are AC, there is no, this isn't always positive, and this isn't always negative. They're swapping places constantly. So, and they're swapping, like they go through zero. At, at a specific moment, both of those are at zero because they're, they're passing by each other. So the waveform looks like this. So there is, there is a moment in time, a very, very tiny fraction of a second, where the output voltage across these is zero. There is also a point when these are at zero. You're not gonna find it touching it, but you can measure it with the scope because we live in the future and we have science now. So when these fail, usually one side or the other is gonna fail. So when you do your test, you'll get a spark on this side, but you won't get a spark on this side. And if you're buying a transformer, or if you've got one that's questionable and you need to test it, this is how you test it. And now you know that one's bad. At which point, makes a hell of a good door stop because they're a nightmare to fix. But now you know the basics of how to test your neon sign transformer. So thank you for hanging out today. Thank you for learning something cool. I'm Chris Bowden, and as always, we'll see you next time.